I was lost and alone in a cold, dark world. No peace of mind, no freedom could I see. But little did I know I had a friend somewhere. Someone I didn't know saw some good in me. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They sacrificed their time. They fell down on their knees and prayed for me. They had the crown that God would bring me. Welcome to South Asheville Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Just take your liberty in the Lord. Good to have Brother Zach back. I'm glad he's feeling better this evening. Uh, continue praying for him. Uh, God's been good to us today. Uh, announcement before we get started. Uh, this coming Saturday night starts our daylight savings time, so we'll turn our clock forward one hour Saturday night so you won't be late for church Sunday morning. Is it late? Is that? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Anyhow, turn the clock forward one hour Saturday night. I said, I can't believe it's this, this, this quickly. It's daylight saving time is beginning again. Got a lot to pray about. Uh, let's continue to pray for all the uh, sick and afflicted. Uh, also, before we start on our prayer list, we got the uh, pledge cards out in the vestibule. Get one and fill it out. Uh, give it in to Sister Blanche. Turn it into her. Also, Pastor, Preci uh, Pastor Appreciation Card. We'll put something in there. Water baptism sign-up sheets in the vestibule and the youth night sign-up sheet. If you're, uh, and water baptism is on March the 13th. That's next Sunday night. Yeah. Next yeah. Sunday night. So it's approaching quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, as we pray, let's continue praying for Robert and Becky Hogan. They need a touch in their bodies. Uh, pray for Ronnie McBride. He was injured at work, and he needs a uh, touch from the Lord. Pray for Larry Brady. He's having complications from COVID. God's able to heal him. Continue praying for Wayne Rouse, Associate Church of God pastor. He's in very serious condition. Uh, also pray for the uh, people in Ukraine. 
you know, every time you turn on the TV, it's just you're seeing how they're just continuing re relentlessly bombing them. Mm -hmm. And they've not done anything. They said all they want to do is live free. Mm -hmm. uh, continue praying for Sister Garner's, uh, Sister Jaren's healing. Pray for Rodney uh, Trotter. Her mother passed away. Pray for Brother Benny. Continue praying for Brother Zach that uh, he'll God will just completely different deliver mm -hmm. him from those migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for uh, Brother Dean's mom. And pray for Brother Dean's co-worker, Joey, that he'll come to church. Brother Dean's inviting him, witnessing to him, that help him that uh, he'll come on and be with us. Remember the Morgan family and the loss of their loved ones. And pray for Sister Judy Lucas. She's sick in her body, so pray for her. See any other prayer requests? Yes. Okay, and pray for Brother Baker. He's going to be having some eye surgery Friday, so pray that God will take care of that. Pray for Sister Blanche's request that the Lord knows all about. Mm -hmm. Will, we'll stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Yes, Sister Angela. Yes. Pray for Robert Jaron. Mm -hmm. God will touch him and heal his body. Yes. He's able to heal him. Pray for Curtis Mayhorn also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the grace of God. in the spirit Romans 8 13 and 14 for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do more by the deeds of the body you shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God so life in the spirit there's life in the spirit there's death and sin let's continue to worship as the choir comes at this time ministering song
Brother and sister Albright, you come and minister in song.
like you. If heaven was not my home, then Lord, what would I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. We land with him eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. The songs that sweet this great grip back from heaven's door, and I can't feel at home in You know, I was thinking about Brother Ernie Morgan uh, when he had, they had his uh, funeral just the other day. They had a video of him. He was singing that song, I've Never Been This Homesick Before. I said, well, he's home. He's not homesick anymore, but he's home. And one of these days, we're going to go the same way. If the Lord tears, each and every one of us will go by the grave. If, but if the Lord comes back, he can take us in the rapture. But either way, we'll be home with him. Praise God. This time, I'll turn the service up after Brother Shelton. How many feel like a stranger around here? I'm not talking about in church. I'm talking about here in this world. We are strange. We are strange people in this world. This world looks at us like we're different because we are different. <clears throat> I'm glad that we're different. I'm glad Jesus makes us different. Amen. <clears throat> Jaden, stand up, son. You ain't got to say anything. Just stand up. <clears throat> Would you give him a hand? <clears throat> Thank you. I told you we're not worshiping him, but if you know where this boy come from, if you knew where this boy come from, and you knew what God got him out of, and I don't know everything, I just know some things, <clears throat> and you see him up in this choir singing for the glory of God. There's a God on the throne who works miracles. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of Jalen. Amen. <clears throat> I told you it's like having a <clears throat> those grandbabies. I brag on them. I brag on that young man because God's done a definite work in his life, and he is working in his life. Amen. <clears throat> he's got a wonderful talent that he's using for the glory of God now. I'm glad he's not what he was. Amen. And God's working in him. Ephesians chapter 5 tonight, verse 8. If you'll stand and pray for us, pray for our voice, please. We're having some issues. God's going to help us. <coughs> Amen. He's able. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5. <coughs> Thank you for being in God's house. <coughs> Good to see Brother Zach back with us. Glad he's feeling better. God's helping him. He just needs a touch. Amen. Needs a touch from God, a healing touch. And, uh, I know God's able to do that. I missed him this morning. I know when he's not here, he's sick. <clears throat> and some folks you don't know that about. <clears throat> but there's some you know when they're not there, they're sick. And uh, I appreciate him being back tonight. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm strangling to death and you're just looking at me. <clears throat> at least praise him while I'm strangling to death. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Let's pray, Father, thank you again tonight for the joy, the gladness of being in the house of God. I was glad when it's time to come to church. <clears throat> we thank you for the singing, the choir that has blessed our heart, Brother and Sister Albright, that is saying and blessed our heart. Thank you for the singing this morning, Brother Baker, bless our heart, all the singers here. We're, we're blessed with wonderful talent that uses it for your glory. We thank you for everything that's been rendered already in this service now. I pray, God, that you'll touch us again. 
You've helped me this morning, Lord, and I need you to help me again tonight. I want to try it on my own, Father. If I was to try it on my own, I just need to step down from up here this evening. Lord, I need your help. I need that divine touch, God, that makes preaching effective. We pray, God, that it will get beyond the ears tonight and get in the hearts. Lord, that you'll touch this congregation. I love this church. I appreciate this church, this good people here, dear Lord. Thank you for those that are here tonight, those that are watching online, Father. We're blessed to be able to come to church freely. We're, we're blessed to live in a country where we still have this freedom to gather this way. And help us, God, not to ever take it for granted. Take advantage of it, Lord, and, and give you glory for it, Father. Meet us in the altars tonight. I pray we'll tarry in these altars, God. Help me not to say anything more or less than what you want me to say now. Let me be led of the Spirit tonight. Father, we'll praise you for it and thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Look over and somebody and tell them I'm going to help the preacher tonight. <clears throat> if you don't, you told a lie. Don't be telling lies. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. The Apostle Paul said, <clears throat> For ye were sometimes darkness. Ye were once darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For ye were sometimes darkness, you were once darkness, but now ye are, are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Can you say amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm glad for the Lord. I'm glad he kept Sister Audrey safe this week. She had to go through some procedures. Thinking about her that day, praying for her. And uh, I know God was right there with her. Brother Baker's going to have to have some procedures done this week. I know the Lord's going to be right there with him. Whatever we face, God is there. And I want to say thank you. I didn't get to say this this morning because I forgot about it. Please forgive me. But you tell Kenny, little brother Kenny, one of the sons of thunder, he came to me on Wednesday night after the service, and he said, <clears throat> back in the back, and he said, would you sing that song? Something got a hold of me on Sunday. That's why we sang that this morning. I've retired from singing, but <clears throat> he requested that. And I forgot to mention it today, but uh, I'm, I'm thankful. He wanted to hear that song. And then he came out of service and told me, thank you for doing that. Amen. Bless my heart. Amen. Appreciate these young people being raised in the house of God. Amen. <clears throat> I want to preach to you for a little while tonight on this thought, children of light. Children of light, it's good to see Haley and Olivia with us tonight. I told Haley if she's going to have to get her a rooster <clears throat> and sit beside her window and wake her up on Sunday mornings, or I'm going to come wake her up myself. <laughs> we miss her, on, she miss her, miss her in that class back there. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to get her out of that bed if we have to buy a bunch of chickens and put out there around her house and let them crow through the night. Amen? I guess that's what they do, crow. Children of the light, Ephesians chapter 5, if you read this chapter, I encourage you to do that tonight. Ephesians chapter 5 is a chapter about change. It teaches us that we are different from this world around us. And since we are different than this world, uh, the Bible's clear that we should live our lives different uh, than those around us who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as sure as there's a clear distinction between daylight and darkness, there's no confusion there. You walk outside during the daytime, you can tell clearly it's daytime. You walk out at night, there's no confusion, the difference between, between day and night. And I can tell you the same must be true. There is a distinct difference between Christians and sinners. It is Jesus that makes the difference. It is Jesus that makes the distinction. It is Jesus that makes the change. The first seven verses of chapter 5, they clearly demonstrate this truth to us. In verse 1, we are commanded to live like God. In verse 2, we are commanded to love like God. 
in verses 3 through 7, we are commanded to leave this world and its ways behind. We're talking about the sinfulness of this world. Then beginning in verse 8, as we've read here, the Apostle Paul tells us why we are to be different. I believe this is something that we need to hear and something we need to heed because we're still living in this world of sin. When you get born again, the Lord does not just isolate you. He doesn't put you in a cave somewhere and hide it. When you get born again, you still go back to that same job. You still go back to that same world out there. The world's not changed. You've changed. We need to understand that we still live in a world out that is operating under the control of the devil uh, and operating in sin. 1 Peter 2 and 11, Peter tells us that we are strangers uh, and pilgrims here. And while now we are strangers and pilgrims in this world, uh, there was a time that we were citizens of this world. And I say citizens, I mean that we fit into this world. We lived like they lived. We thought like they think. We did what they do. We were part of them. We were in darkness. We were in sin. We were in slavery, uh, just like that lost and dying world is even right now. But the moment that we were saved by the power of the grace of God, I want to tell you something, friend. Uh, there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, that God still is a God of grace and mercy and love. And He's still seeking to save the lost. And the moment that we were saved by the grace of God, uh, we were instantly changed. Instantly there was a divine work that took place in our heart. We were delivered from that old life of sin. We were given a new life of righteousness. And now that we've been changed, now that we've been saved, the Bible said that we have been called to come out from among that world and to be separate. That does not mean that we live in a cave. It does not mean that we isolate ourselves behind closed doors. I believe that the church ought to rub elbows and shoulders with sinners out there. I believe that we ought to take the light that's in us now uh, and let it shine before a lost and dying world. I believe that when you get saved uh, on, a, on a Sunday night or a Sunday morning, uh, the first thing you ought to do on Monday uh, is to tell everybody at that job, uh, Jesus came into my heart and life last night. Uh, I believe you ought to tell that God at the gate, Brother Daddy, uh, something happened. Jesus made a change uh, in my life. Uh, when I got saved on a Sunday night, I went back to work on a Monday morning, uh, and the first thing out of my mouth is, uh, Guess what happened to me at church last night? I, I got saved. I've been washed by the blood. I, somebody said, does that mean I, you're not going to go drinking with us anymore? I, I can hear myself right now. I said, did you not hear what I just said? I, I got saved. Jesus changed my life. I, I don't live that way anymore. I, that is the wonder working power of God. I, you can go to church going straight to hell. I, meet Jesus in an altar. I, he can change your life you can leave that service uh, going straight to heaven uh, that is the grace and the power of God almighty now <laughs> now we have been delivered from that life of sin we've been delivered from that sinful world while we have been saved now and while we have been changed we still have that fleshly part of us I know some of you were born saved, some of you were born sanctified, but not everybody's like that. Just because you've been saved, you've been changed now, and I, there's still that fleshly part of us uh, that desires the things of the world uh, that we left behind when we got saved. Listen to me. Your flesh, when you got saved, uh, your flesh did not get saved. Matter of fact, your flesh cannot be saved. Can you say Amen. It must be crucified. When you get born again, when you come to Jesus Christ, and there is that pressure from within of that flesh, given the opportunity that wants to reach out to those things that are forbidden by God. 
That flesh is still sinful. That flesh is still worldly. Do you listen to me, friend? <clears throat> we might be saved. Uh, we might be changed. Uh, our desires might change. Our nature might change. Uh, but that old flesh that lives inside of us that's in there, uh, there's a war that goes on inside the child of God. Uh, it is a battle between the spirit uh, and the flesh. Uh, and if that flesh is given the opportunity to live uh, and to control us, uh, amen, it still loves sin. Uh, it still hates holiness. Our flesh is in rebellion against God Almighty. The Bible said they that are in the flesh, they cannot please God. That flesh must be dealt with. That flesh must be crucified. It must be rendered ineffective and inoperative in our life. In other words, when I got born again, that old flesh, uh, that old sinful nature of mine, uh, the, the grave has got to be dug. Uh, I've got to put him in that. Uh, I've got to cover him up. Uh, and now I'm going to follow the Spirit. Uh, I'm going to live in obedience to the Word of the Lord. Uh, and if I'll live like that, uh, I can keep the flesh in the grave uh, and I'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Can you say amen? Our flesh cannot be saved. It cannot be made to do good. It cannot be made to do right. It must be crucified. And it must be crucified daily so that we walk in the Spirit. You've heard me say it many times every day that I arise. Every day the Lord opens my eyes. I tell the Lord, today I choose to walk with you. Today I choose to serve you. That must be a decision that we make daily. And we must walk in that each and every day. <clears throat> Listen to me tonight. This is the reason that we go to church and we go to church faithfully. Every time you come to church, you're feeding the spiritual man. And this is why we pray. We pray daily. We pray faithfully because every time you pray, you're feeding the spiritual man. You're feeding the new man. This is why we read our Bibles daily. Because every time you get in the Word of God, you're feeding the new man. This is why we fast. This is why we try to walk in obedience to the Word of God. This is the reason that we lay aside the sin and every weight that does so easily beset us. This is the reason that we abstain from the very appearance of evil. This is the reason that we set no wicked thing before our eyes. This is the reason we're careful who we walk with uh, and the company that we keep the Bible said how can two uh, walk together uh, except they be agreed this is why we make sure uh, that daily I'm living my life uh, to please the Lord uh, because every time I feed the new man uh, we are starving the old man uh, I said every time uh, I feed the new man uh, I'm keeping the dirt covered up uh, over the old man uh, and when he tries to rise up, when he tries to lead me away from the things of God, I've got control because the Spirit of God is operating in me. And I'm going to follow the Spirit and not fulfill the lust and the sin of my flesh. Can you say amen? This is the reason that people struggle so. Because they're not feeding the new man faithfully. This is the reason they keep giving in to temptation. Every time that same temptation comes, that flesh wants to do wrong. That flesh loves sin. That flesh loves to live contrary to the Word of God. That's why people struggle such in such a manner. It's because they're not properly feeding the new man. I know you get tired of him preaching sometimes about faithful church attendance. I, I know you say it's just a broken record, uh, but I preach that uh, because every time you come to church uh, and, and you come in there with the right attitude, uh, you're feeding the new man uh, and you're stamping the grave dust uh, on the old man. Uh, that's why I preach to you the necessity uh, that you got to pray every single day. Uh, you can't skip days. Uh, you can't take days off, uh, but you got to get 
get in this book and eat every single day uh, so that you're feeding the new man uh, so that when the devil tries to tempt you uh, you don't have to yield to it uh, you don't have to give in to it uh, but you can follow the spirit of God uh, and walk in the power of God almighty everybody battles their flesh come on now you bunch of saved sanctified people you say, I don't ever battle my flesh. Let, that, let somebody come by you and try to run you off the road, your family in there. You feel that heat rise up in your ears. Let somebody treat your family bad and you feel that start to rise up in you. Come on, say amen to me. We are in a battle. We're in a warfare every single day. That flesh cannot be made right. It cannot be made good. Uh, listen, friend, you can you can try to do things right for a little while. Uh, but if you're not feeding that new man, uh, that flesh is going to gain control of you again. Uh, and you're going to be right back out there in sin, right back up bound up uh, in what you were bound up before. Uh, so that's why it's important uh, that when the church doors are open, uh, we don't do this for our health. Uh, we do this because we're trying to get people uh, to live for God and make it to heaven. We want people to grow in the grace of God. When the church doors are open, if it's all possible, be in the house of God. Get in your Bible daily. Make sure the company that you keep that is people that love God and live for the Lord. Make sure that where you go, what you listen to, what you do, what you watch, that it pleases God. And every time you do that, you keep the old man down and the new man will have life uh, and you'll walk in the spirit of the Lord can you say man there is pressure from within because the old man does not want to do right the old man loves what it loves and it loves sin it's a, it's a tragedy to think of how many people in our churches are bound by pornography I said it's a tragedy to think about how many people that, that are Christians. I'm not unchristianized in some of them. There are some that are struggling, they're being tempted, uh, and they're trying their best to resist it. Uh, but again, that thing comes, uh, and again, that you know, they're drawn back to it. Uh, I'm just telling you, they're in a fight. Uh, but you want to know how to gain victory over pornography? Uh, amen. Take your eyes off of it. Uh, get your mind in the Word of God. Uh, get back on your knees. Uh, seek the face of the Lord. Uh, feed the new man, uh, and the old man will starve to death. Uh, and when it comes and tries to tempt you uh, you can say I'm not going to give in to that temptation uh, I'm going to live for God I'm going to obey God uh, and every time you resist it uh, you gain strength to resist it again uh, and again and again uh, and you walk in victory through Jesus Christ people are being bombarded with pornography it's everywhere that you go you can't walk through Walmart and not see pornographic images there on the on the on the newspaper stands, the magazines racks. You can't walk through the mall. Uh, you know, some one preacher said Victoria's Secret is no longer a secret. The secret's out. They show everything they got. Everywhere you look, things are, are geared towards sex and lust and all of these things. I, I'm telling you, friend, I, if you're going to get victory over it, I, you got to starve the old man I, and you got to feed that new man. I, and if you do that, I, I tell you, you can lift your head up. I, you can thank God. I, I'm not going to fall back into that trap. I, the Lord rescued me. He delivered me out of it. I, and I'm going to walk in the Spirit of God. There is a fight that goes on inside of us. There's a battle taking place in us. That spirit man wants to lead us in the things of God. But the flesh wants to lead us away from the things of God. How do I know what's what? Well, when that voice comes to you, when that thing comes to your mind, you just measure it by the word of God. Is it going to draw me to God? Is it going to make me stronger in God? Is it leading me in the things of God? That's the spirit trying to lead you. That flesh always tells you things contrary to the word. That flesh will tell you you're too tired to pray. You don't have to read your Bible today. 
That flesh will tell you you can still hang around that old crowd you hung around with uh, before you got saved. Uh, you'll not get pulled back into that lifestyle. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. Uh, not only is the devil a liar, uh, but the flesh in us is a liar as well uh, because it wants what it wants. Uh, so the Bible shows us uh, that we've been changed now. Uh, we've been brought out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light. Uh, and if I'll walk in that light, uh, I'll not give in to that lust of that flesh if you give in to it make it right repent of it and say oh boy you're not going to get me again I'm going to do what's right by God's word and God will give me the grace Men did abound. the grace of God did much more abound I wish I was 20 years old again where sin abounds the grace of God much more abounds you say I can't give this up I can't quit doing that no you can't on your own and your flesh will never let you stop it I said your flesh will never allow you to quit doing wrong but if you get to praying like you're supposed to if you go to church like you're supposed to if you listen to the preaching and the teaching like you're supposed to if you'll ride that order, if you'll get in that order and seek God, if you'll make sure in your home that your home is holy, that you get the ungodly mess out of it, if you make sure the company that you keep and the people that you walk with, the people you surround yourself with, amen, it's people that love God and are serving God. I tell you, friend, you can walk in Christian victory. You don't have to be a carnal Christian. You can have victory over seeing the power of sin, the bondage of sin, and it all begins with the change that Jesus makes in our heart. I've said it many times. I've got a lot of preaching to do, and I was planning on preaching a short message, so bear with me tonight. I've watched it happen so many times, Brother Dean, down through the years. I've watched people start church, come to the altar, give their heart to the Lord, but they're not faithful in church attendance. They don't last. They don't last. I'm not being ugly, rude, or crude. I'm just telling you a fact. They don't last. They'll be back out there doing things they ought not to be doing. They'll be back. Listen, I believe some of them really want to change. They really want to do right. But they were not faithful in the small things. They were not faithful in the elementary things of serving God. Christianity is not complicated uh, serving God is not difficult uh, if you do the simple things uh, if you go to church uh, if you pray uh, if you study your Bible uh, if you do those things God will help you uh, you can't help but grow uh, in the grace of God uh, and as you grow uh, you'll be able to resist the devil resist temptation uh, and make a change in somebody else's life because of yours you don't go to church, you ain't going to go to heaven. I said, if you don't go to church, there's something wrong in there. When you don't have a desire to be in church, the flesh don't want to go to church. The flesh does not want boundaries. L listen to me. If, if, if this church were to lower the standards, if we were to, to say, listen, you can live like you want. Live any way you want. Get on this platform. Uh, do whatever you want. Uh, we'd have to knock walls out because the building would not hold the people here. But because of the boundaries that, that we set, the standard we have in this church uh, that are based on the Word of God, uh, the flesh does not want boundaries. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, uh, we've got to bring our body under subjection, uh, and we've got to be disciplined uh, in our walk with the Lord. Uh, and if we'll do that, uh, when the flesh tries to rise up, uh, you can say, not today, devil. Uh, I'm not going to give in to that. Uh, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to do it one day at a time. Somebody say amen. There is pressure from the old man that wants to drag us back into sin. That flesh wants to control us. Beyond that, there's always pressure for the saints of God to be more like this world around us. There's even subtle pressure from those that we love. Family, friends, 
neighbors, co-workers, people that we care about. I've had people tell me, I don't understand why y'all go to church three times a week. My response is, I don't understand why you don't. I love to be in church. I am the happiest when I'm in the house of God. I'm a happy person, but I am the happiest when I'm here in God's house, when I'm among the saints of God, when I'm in the presence of God. That's why my heart just swells and is overwhelmed. When I see Jalen up here in this choir, it brings such joy to my heart to see the change that God makes in people's lives. I've had people question me before and say, I don't know why y'all live so strict like you do. I tell them, I'm not the one that made the rules. I'm not the one that wrote the book. I, I'm just telling you what the book says. I, I'm just telling you what the boundaries that God said. I, I'm not in bondage. I, I'm free because Jesus Christ said, I, whom the Son sets free, they are free indeed. There's pressure from those that we love who want to see us behave more like them. Why don't you dress like us? Why don't you go the places we go? We don't stand up wrong having a beer once in a while. Well, one beer will turn into two beers. And two beers will turn into a case. And a case will turn into broken homes and children having to suffer. They, they don't understand and they want us to try to, you, you know, live like they do. Well, I, I believe one of the reasons uh, that our, our family members and loved ones, those that are lost, uh, the reason they want us to behave more like them uh, is because the way we live makes them feel guilty about the way they're living. I mean, I don't say anything, anything to them about how they do. I uh, wonder why they want to say something to me about how I do. Because they feel guilty of the way that we live. The point here is this. There is pressure in the life of a child of God from day to day, from the many different tools of Satan to get us to go back, to get us to turn our backs on God. The Bible said we must not be ignorant of his devices. Now, I've told you about the flesh. I've told you about that world that wants us to live like them, to behave like them, to act like them, that's trying to pull us back. And while there is a pressure among the church to go back, there is also, thank God, a pressure to go forward. Just as sure as that flesh and that world uh, longs for us to conform to its ways, uh, the Spirit of God lives within us. Uh, that resurrected Spirit of God, uh, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave uh, on that third day uh, is the same Spirit uh, that's living inside of us. Uh, and it wants us to be transformed uh, into the ways of God uh, so that we can be what God uh, wants us to be, what he saved us for. So while there's a pull to go back, thank God that the Spirit of God within us is leading us forward, that we'll grow, we'll develop, we'll mature, and we'll be everything that God desires for us to be. I'm glad it's not just one-sided. One little boy said, his mama told him, don't you dare go in there and get a cookie before dinner. My mama's told us that before. I remember distinctly. I don't know if she knows this or not. I've got to be careful. I start confessing because some of this stuff she don't know. She knew everything. I don't know how she did it. Sometimes I think she tricked us, but she knew everything we did. Mamas know things like that. <laughs> she said, "Don't you go in there and get those cookies. Don't go get no nothing sweet before dinner." That wouldn't work at our house. You ought to see our our menu sometimes. You ought to see Anna Grace's breakfast menu. Make you sick. She was downstairs the other morning getting something to take upstairs, you know, going to eat something. And she had, if I remember correctly, two pieces of bacon. She had bacon. Now it left me. I've seen her get up and have outback steak for breakfast. She had two pieces of bacon. She had a strawberry shortcake ice cream and something else that didn't go with anything of those. I thought if I ate that, I'd be in the emergency room having to have my stomach pumped for breakfast. 
come on now. When I was growing up, you know, you didn't do, you didn't get in the suite before time to eat. Now we just eat any old thing. But I remember getting that chair out uh, and climbing up on that chair, looking around, making sure my mama didn't come in there and getting something off the refrigerator, I believe it was, and eating it uh, and then lying about it. I didn't do that. Got it all over my mouth. I didn't get into that. And that little boy, his mama told him, said, don't you dare eat that cookie before dinner. She come back a little while later, and he had cookie crumbs all over his face, had chocolate on his teeth. Uh, and she said, I thought I told you not to eat that cookie. Uh, he, he said, what happened? How in the world? Why did you do that? Why didn't you listen? Uh, he said, well, Mama, it's like this. Uh, he said, the devil had me by one hand uh, a pulling, and God had me by the other, uh, and the devil pulled the hardest. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, there is a pull uh, to pull us back. Uh, there is a pressure today. Uh, but thank God uh, that God's pulling harder. Uh, God's drawing us to himself. God's made a way where sin tries to draw us back. He'll give us grace to resist it. He'll give us grace to be able to submit to God. Resist the devil and the devil will flee. If you let God do the pulling and if you follow God, you walk in victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Spirit of God is pulling us, leading us, drawing us. And if we'll let the Spirit of God lead us this way, you and I can walk in victory. Romans 12 and 1 and 2 said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God gives us the power through his spirit uh, to no longer be conformed to this age, to this world, uh, but we can be transformed. Uh, we can live a holy life. Uh, we can live a righteous life. Uh, I tell you, you really get born again uh, and you're going to live a righteous life. Uh, you're going to have a desire to live a holy life. Uh, sure, that flesh is going to fight that. Uh, sure, that flesh is going to try to pull, uh, pull you back. Uh, but if you submit yourself to God and his word and you let God have control of your life you'll be transformed and God will do a wonderful work in your life somebody give him a hand of praise tonight we can go forward with God we can grow in the grace of God through his presence and power in our lives we live in a hard world we live in a dark world a world that is dominated by sin. A world that is driven by sin. Do you listen to me? I know it looks dark out there. I'm not talking about the time of night it is. But I'm talking about sin-wise. It looks like sin has control and a stranglehold on this world. But in the midst of that darkness, Lord God have mercy. In the midst of that depravity, God has a redeemed people. There is a bride. There is a church. I don't ever want to give the idea that South Asheboro is, that we believe we're the only people that's right on this earth. There is a bride that is bigger than we are right here. There is a remnant around this world. There's some Christians over there in Ukraine right now uh, that's serving God and living for the Lord. There's some people over in Russia, uh, amen, that are serving God. Uh, there's some people in Africa right now uh, that love God with all of their heart. Uh, God has a redeemed people. Uh, he has redeemed a people uh, that he expects to be different. Uh, and he has redeemed a people uh, that he has empowered uh, to be different. Thank God uh, that we've been changed. Changed. Thank God I'm not what I used to be, but I am what I am by the grace of God Almighty. I'm glad I'm not in darkness and sin any longer, but I've been brought out of that sin, out of that darkness, into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. He made a change in my life. God has a people. God has a remnant. There is a bride. There is a church. Just because you go to church does not make you a part of the true church. To be a part of the true church, 
You got to be blood washed. You got to be saved. You got to be forgiven of your sins. I want to tell you, friend, that once you get in, hallelujah, it's better than any membership at a country club. It's better than a membership at Costco or Sam's. It's better than any membership in the elite groups around the world. But to get into this uh, this church, you got to come through the blood of Jesus Christ. But when you get in, when you've been redeemed, when you've been washed by that blood, why in the world would anybody want to get out of it? How in the world would anybody want to go back? It is the greatest gift that God has given to mankind. That is the gift of his son and the gift of salvation. So if you're in, stay in. And if you're not in, you're running out of time to get in. I said if you're in, stay in. Live for God. You don't have to know great theology. You don't have to be able to speak Greek and Hebrew to go to heaven. But you got to go to church. And you got to pray. And you got to read your Bible. You need to fast. You need to set aside times for fasting. When you fast, you push that plate away. And the time that you would be eating that meal, you give that time to prayer. You give that time in the Word of God. I tell you, it'll change your life. It'll change how you walk. It'll change uh, when the battle comes, when the fight comes. It, it's a terrible thing. I know as a young Christian, it's a hard thing fighting that flesh, especially when you fail, when you give in to that flesh, when you do wrong, and you have to say, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I'm sorry I did that. That old thing comes again. Seems like when he comes again, seems like he's stronger. He's more bold now. But the other side of that is when you're able to resist that flesh, when you're able to resist that temptation, when the enemy comes again, now the Spirit of God is strong and bolder inside of you that you can say no easier. And there'll come a time. I know when people first get saved, there are things that we struggle with. I know some folks struggle with cigarettes. Some folks struggle with different things, dip, other things like that. That They're fighting. Doesn't mean they're not saved. Doesn't mean they've been not been born again. But they need to be sanctified from those things. I said they need to be sanctified, set apart from those things. I'm telling you, every time you're able to resist that thing, God gives you the strength uh, to say no again uh, and again uh, until finally the devil will stop coming at you over it uh, because he realizes uh, you've got victory over it. Uh, you're not going to yield to it. Uh, you're not going to give in it. Uh, you're going to walk on in the victory that God has given you. I remember when I first got saved, struggling with things, fighting some things. I'm glad that God helped me and I was able to finally be sanctified from those things because had I not been, I wouldn't be up here preaching tonight. I wouldn't be in church tonight. Those things would have pulled me right back into what I was and I'd have been worse off than I was before I ever got right with God. But when temptation comes, if we'll do the basics, if we'll just do the basics of this thing, you'll have strength to say no to temptation. Oh, God. I remember one time years ago, my boss man told me, we got a phone call in, our, in the office there, and he, it was for him. And I said, I went and I said, you got a phone call. He said, tell him I'm not here. Now, there was a time as a young Christian, I might have fought with that thing. I might have struggled with that. I might have went there and said that. Well, he said he's not here, you know. He's not here. That's right. But when you keep the flesh at bay, when you keep the flesh in subjection, where that he's rendered ineffective, I told him right to his face, I'm not going to lie for you or anybody else. If he fired me, he'd have fired me. But I wouldn't lie. He, ah, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, he was supposed to be a Christian too. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what I'm telling you is this is that when you're able to resist one temptation, it gives you a boldness that I can resist it again. I can resist the next one. And I can walk with God. I can live right. There's a pressure trying to pull us back. 
But thank God that the Spirit of God is leading us forward. Uh, and if we'll go forward with God, uh, you can't help but grow in God. Uh, you, listen, I, I'm telling you, I've watched people start out uh, that struggled, uh, that, you know, couldn't hardly make it. Uh, but they held on and they stayed in there. Uh, and today their powerhouses in God. Uh, today God uses their life in a marvelous way. Uh, so whatever happens, uh, don't give up, don't give out, and don't quit. Uh, if you failed God, make it right get it under the blood uh, and say Lord if you'll help me I'll not do that again uh, I'm going to keep that flesh at bay uh, and I'm going to walk in the spirit uh, and I'm going to please the one who changed my life the world is dominated by sin it's driven by sin but thank God we've been changed and the apostle Paul said in verse 8 we were sometimes darkness that means we were lost. We were in the darkness of sin and depravity. We were blinded by the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 said, Who, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Listen to me, friend. Stop scratching your head uh, trying to figure out why your lost children are doing what they're doing. They've been blinded by the God of this world. Stop scratching your head and pacing the floors trying to figure out. I just don't understand why they're living like that. If they're in sin, they're bound up in darkness. That's all they know. I said that's all they understand. That is normal unto them. You and I were enslaved to the same sin. We knew nothing else. We wanted nothing else. We were lost in the dark and headed to hell. We lived like lost people because that's exactly what we were. We lived in sin because we were sinners. We lived in sin because we were lost. I lived a sinful life because I was in darkness. I was blind to it. How I lived seemed normal to me. It didn't seem strange. It didn't seem odd. It didn't seem out of place. The way I lived seemed a normal life to me because I was in darkness. I'm not proud of the things I did when I was in sin. But I did those things because I was in sin. I met a man at Lowe's Hardware the other day. God, give us wisdom when we deal with sinners. Because they're in darkness. They're blinded to how they live. God, help me to be long-suffering with them. Help me to be patient with them. Because I lived in the same darkness they live in. I did some things and some things worse than what they do. There was a man who came out there at Lowe's, nice man, going to help me load something. And uh, I'm not going to call his name because we're online, but I remember his name. He was a nice, nice man. He was about 60 years old. And I got to talking to him, and he started saying some cuss words. Now, that was normal to him because he's a sinner. Sinners do those things. And I'm sitting there thinking, listening to him. That's what I used to do. I used to talk like that when I was in sin. That was my vernacular. I used foul language. I didn't think anything about it. didn't matter who had done it in front of. I wouldn't do it for my parents. But for the most part, I didn't care what I said, who, what I said it in front of. And I thought, here this man is. He's blind to how he's living. He has no idea. He don't know what's going on. This is normal to him. But if you spend any time with me, just a few minutes with me, it ain't going to be long I'm going to be talking about the church or talking about the Lord. And, I, you know, it come up, the subject right away came up. I said, uh, you know, about something somebody at our church said and how that God's helped people at the church through these times. We are talking about how bad things were and how this COVID had gone on. And I, I began to witness to him about the, about the Lord. And, you know, he listened to me. I thought, here's a man that's blind. Bound up in sin. Just like I was. 
Sometimes we're so quick to point our finger at them and uh, cast them aside. Uh, but let me remind you, uh, every one of us were born in sin. Uh, every one of us were in that same darkness. Uh, every one of us, the Apostle Paul, we were sometimes uh, darkness. We were bound. We were depraved uh, in our lifestyle. Uh, but thank God uh, that now that we are light uh, because Jesus has made a change. Uh, and I want that light to shine uh, so that somebody in the the same darkness I was in. I can't know there's hope for you, sir. You don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to live in that sinful lifestyle. The change he made in me, he can make the same change in you. We were sometimes in darkness, but because of Jesus, now we are light in the Lord, the Apostle Paul said in verse 8. When the Lord saved us, he delivered us from the darkness. You can look your nose down at people and you can say, bless God, look at how they're living. And we do that sometimes in the church and we hurt people and we run people off and we cause people not to want to come to our church because of how judgmental we are sometimes. Am I doing all right? Say amen. We look at people. And we look down at them because they're living in sin, but just... Take a trip down memory lane and remember how you lived in sin. Remember what you were bound by. Remember the darkness you were in. You didn't always dress holy. I didn't think that'd go over too well, but you didn't always dress holy. You didn't always talk right. You didn't always act the right way. You didn't always go to church. You didn't always try to live by the word of God. Some of us wouldn't want our past lives put up on the screen here and let the world see how we lived, the things we did in sin. I'm glad somebody came along that, that were, had the light of Jesus Christ in their life and showed us there can be a change. You don't have to live like that anymore. Jesus can make a change in you, can you, Jalen? Jesus can come into your heart and bring light into your life. I want to tell you this. i got to close. I, ain't, I don't have all this finished. I won't finish it. I don't have time. I want to tell you something. I love my wife. We've been married 33 years. I love my children. I love my son-in-laws. I love my grandbabies. I love my church family. But the greatest thing ever happened in my life is not my wife, not my children, not my grandchildren, the greatest thing ever happened in my life is when Jesus on a Sunday night in that old building over there came into my heart and saved me and changed my life for good made a change in me, brought me out of that darkness I was living in I put me on a new path, put me on a new road and cause light uh, to shine in my life. Uh, and now the Bible said we are to walk uh, as children of light. Uh, I don't live like I used to live. Uh, you may not like my lifestyle. Uh, you may not like how I serve God. Uh, but that doesn't change one thing uh, about how I'm going to live. Uh, I live the way that I do. Uh, not to be saved. Uh, but I live like I do because I am saved. Uh, and I owe him my all. Uh, I owe him everything. Uh, he made a change in me uh, that I could never make in myself. Jesus made a change. Jesus made a change in my life that I could not make in myself. I was in darkness. But now we are children of light. We are brought out of darkness, Peter said, into his marvelous light. Will you stand? i got to close. We are delivered from that past lifestyle of sin. God help us to be long-suffering with sinners because God is. He is long-suffering not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We were in darkness. 
but now because of Jesus. And, and I say that, I want to be emphatic about that. Only because of Jesus. I got saved in church. But Jesus could have saved me anywhere. He's already, Brother Charlie's already said that tonight. If you've been saved, it's all because of him. Somebody may have been the one to led you to the Lord. You might have heard a preacher preach that, that touched your heart, a song that was sang. But it's all because Jesus made a change in us. I don't know how you feel about it. But I am so thankful, Brother Eddie, that I'm not what I used to be. You don't know what I used to be, but I do. Sister Shelton knows what I used to be. You don't, but I know and she knows. I'm so glad, Sister Olga, I'm not what I used to be. Jesus came into my heart, and he made a change in my life. I don't ever, ever want to go back to what I was before, ever. I told the Lord years ago, more than one time, I said, Lord, you know all things. Sister, come on, get ready. To come on, play softly, please. You know all things. If you look ahead in time, And you see that I was going to backslide down the road. I'd rather you take me to heaven now. I wouldn't want to leave my family, my children, but if you saw, I'd rather you take me on to heaven now. I don't ever want to go back on God, Brother Becker. The Lord has been too good to us. He has been too good to us, Brother Dean. He's made a change in our hearts and our lives. He's put a love in us. That makes you love everybody. Do you love everybody? If you don't love everybody, you don't have God in your heart. God will make you love everybody. Even your enemies, those that make themselves your enemies, God will cause you to love them, care for them. We were darkness, but now we're children of light. Now we're to walk in that as children of God. There should be no confusion among your lost family members, your lost co-workers, the lost people you come in contact with every day. There should no, be no confusion about whose side you're on. There should be no confusion to whether you're a Christian or not. They get around you. They should see the light that Christ is placed within us. We are to walk in such a way that people daily see the light of Christ in us that shows them. I don't know what's happened to them, <laughs> but they sure ain't what they used to be. Something's happened. Something's changed in their life. They should see that in us every day. Jesus now lives in our hearts and lives. To walk as children of light, we are to avoid sinful thinking. You say, Brother Shelton, I can't control what, you know, my mind. Well, if you couldn't, the Apostle Paul said, whatsoever things are pure and true and honest and a good report and on and on, think on these things. One preacher said you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But you can stop him from building a nest there. To have a bad thought is not a sin. The devil shoots darts into our mind. But you don't have to entertain that thought. You can get that thought out of there and say, oh, no, no, no. That don't belong here. I'm going to get my mind back on God. I'm going to get my mind back on Christ. I'm going to get my mind back on the Word of God. I'm going to think on those things. We have to avoid sinful thinking. Listen to me, men. Can't walk around out there looking at those ladies in a wrong manner 
and think, well, it's okay to look as long as I don't touch. Jesus said if a man looks upon a woman with lust in his heart, he has committed adultery. Careful what you let your mind meditate on, what you let your mind think on. That's why pornography is so dangerous. I sure didn't plan on getting on this night, but I'm here. I'm going to stay here just a minute. I'm going to come and pray. That's why pornography is so dangerous because when you get that image in your mind, the devil will replay it over and over and over and over. I read a statistic some time ago. I've started a message on pornography. If the Lord will help me finish it, I'm going to preach it here sometime. That over 50%, I believe it was 57%, if I'm not mistaken, 57%, over 50%, let's say that, over 50% of men in church that call themselves Christians admitted they were bound by pornography. That pornography had a hold of their life. That's why we have to avoid sinful thinking. We have to be careful we let our eyes go. We have to be careful what we entertain in our minds because that thing will get a hold of your heart. It'll turn you into a pervert. It'll cause you to lose the value of a woman, your wife, a woman, and turn them into an object rather than the creation God made them. Men are driven by sight. Women are driven by touch, feel, emotion. Men are driven by what they see. Ladies, God help us not to dress in a manner that will cause a man to look at you in the wrong way. Boy, that got quiet here, didn't it? Because you're just as guilty. If a man looks upon a woman with lust in his heart, the Bible said he's committed adultery. But that woman, if she dresses in a provocative manner that, that, that becomes a stumbling block to that man, she's just as guilty as the man that looked at her wrong. You feel that draw up real tight? That's why the Bible admonishes us and teaches us to dress modest. We don't run around in a birthday suit. We don't run around like a prostitute. Dressed in a manner that's modest so that you don't become a stumbling block for these teenage boys that their hormones are raging right now. This all right, sis Shuck, am I doing pretty good? You need to say amen because people are looking at me funny right now. To walk as children of light, we have to avoid sinful thinking. We have to avoid sinful living. We are to surrender our all to the Spirit of God. And when we do that, He will produce in us the peaceable fruit of righteousness, the Bible says. If we've been changed, we ought to live like changed people. Can you see, man? Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight, please. I've got more I'm not going to finish. Preach too long. If you're here and you're lost, it starts with salvation. You got to be saved. You got to be born again. If you're a backslider, you've got to come to the Lord. You've got to return to Him. I want to give you an opportunity tonight if you're not saved, if you're lost, if you're not ready for heaven. These altars are open for you to come and pray and talk to God. Nobody's going to grab you. Nobody's going to shake you. Nobody's going to. But people are coming and pray with you because they love you and they care about you. You can be a good person and go to hell. Hell's not full of just murderers and thieves and rapists and serial killers. Hell's got some. It's full of good people, people that live good lives, good moral lives. But they never got saved. They were never born again. You can't go to heaven just because you've been good. The Bible says there's none that doeth good, no, not one. 
Jesus said, you must be born again. You've got to be saved. If you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Would you come? If you're here tonight while we're praying for them, while, if you're here tonight, and you'd say, Pastor, I'm struggling with my flesh. We all have. And if I don't do what's necessary day to day, I've been saved a long time. Some of you longer than me, some of you less. But if I don't do what I'm supposed to do daily, that old flesh, he'll rise right back up. He'll take charge again. If you're struggling with that flesh and you need to get him in the grave tonight, these altars are open for you to come. If you know that you need to pray more, you know you need to spend more time in that Bible, you know there's some things that you need to change. I get so tired of hearing people say, I know I need to. I need to do this. Well, don't just say it. Do it. I need to. Never got anything done. Do it. I know I need to pray more. Don't just say that. Do it. Pray more. I know I need to read my Bible more. Don't just say I need to. Do it. I want some of you brethren to come pray with this young man right here. Anybody else? You've got some things in your life you need God to help you with tonight. I want to just invite you to come. These altars are open. If you need to pray and talk to God, you can put an altar there at your seat. You can come down here. Lord, help us to keep that flesh crucified. Help me daily to keep that old man crucified. Keep that flesh in the grave by submitting myself to God, by obeying God's word, by doing what I know to do. I'll do that. God will give me the grace. God will help me. God will help me. God will help you. Every day. Let's pray some.
you're able to, reach over and lay your hand on somebody and pray for them tonight. If you're able to, if you're caught for doing it, just reach over and lay your hand on somebody, your brother, your sister. Just pray for them tonight. Tell God to touch them. Pray for them right where you are tonight. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what they're battling right now. You don't know what they're facing right now. You don't know what they're up against right now. You don't know what's going on in their life. Pray for them. Ask God to encourage them, to help them, to come. It'll take us eternity to praise him for the change he's made in our life. It'll take us all eternity to give him thanks for what he's done in our lives if we've been saved. Thank God we'll have all eternity to do that. To thank him for what he's changed, how he's changed us. The difference Christ made. what you were. Before I got saved, I was a heathen. I was a heathen. I almost see him. I had a hold of my life. I've said it often to you. This is Damien, that if we had not gotten saved, there is no doubt in my mind we would have been divorced years and years and years ago because I was hard to live with. I would probably be in hell right now.
So you just forgive me if I get beside myself sometimes. Amen. You just overlook me if I get happy sometimes because I know the pit he got me out of. I know what he got me out of. Brother 